progress that reaches from coast to coast, keeping pace with the growing needs of a great nation. Progress is writing a new chapter in railroad transportation. New comforts, conveniences, dependability, safety. Every year, millions of Americans travel billions of miles on the railroads, enjoying this relaxed and tension-free way to journey, enjoying the safety and certainty which the railroads bring to everyone's travel planning, regardless of winds, the weather, or visibility. There are extra comforts, too. Air-conditioned coaches, master bedrooms, each with a private bath, meals prepared by expert chefs, electro-pneumatic doors, which open at a touch, public telephones. From certain trains, you can telephone your home or your office as readily as from the corner drugstore. And still more improvements and greater comforts are on the way. So take a look into the past to remind ourselves of railroad travel in times gone by. In the year 1850, this was Coach Travel Deluxe. This locomotive, made in England, was aptly named the John Bull. Powerful for its day, it consumed a lot of wood, had a big appetite. The train crew and the passengers often had to stop along the way to restock the wood pile. To put the brakes on, the engineer only had to holler his head off to the brakeman in his shelter on top of the tender. Yes, this is how the iron horse got its start. Today, the modern iron horse numbers in the thousands. From one part of the country to another, freight and passenger trains are hauled by powerful locomotives. This one, a twin-unit diesel, delivers 3,700 horsepower. Every locomotive, whether diesel, steam, or electric, comes in for a checkup after every trip. Let's go along. We'll find progress here, too. The workmen and technicians take over. Some inspect and service the undercarriage and trucks. Others attend the big diesel engines. The diesel engines turn the generators, which make the power for the electric motors which drive the locomotive. And to service this equipment requires expert knowledge of engine maintenance and of new devices, like this relay for the cab signals, and this governor of the speed control. Inside the cab of a diesel, we can see a few of the many modern devices which aid the locomotive engineer. These are the cab signals. They reproduce the wayside signals. In fair weather or foul, in sleet or fog, our engineer knows at all times the conditions ahead. This duplication of the wayside signals on the cab signals is accomplished by electric impulses flowing through the rails. Right now, the signal in the cab reads clear. But let's assume the next wayside signal shows a less favorable indication requiring a reduction in speed. The instant our locomotive passes this next signal, its indication is picked up by the cab signals. It is less favorable, and so a warning whistle sounds. And, cautioned by ear as well as by eye, our engineer reduces speed. These are his controls, the throttle and the air brake, and their function is obvious. What is not readily apparent is that these locomotives are equipped with speed control, which automatically slows down the locomotive and stops it if the engineer should fail to obey the signals. Just imagine if you had such a device in your automobile, you would never get a ticket for speeding. Here's how it works. 
Let's suppose our engineer is proceeding under a signal like this one, which indicates a clear track ahead. Now a less favorable signal appears, instructing him to slow down and prepare to stop. Our engineer has six seconds to take action. If he fails to act, the automatic speed control takes over and stops his train. But seeing is believing, so we'll take a demonstration ride. It's raining, but visibility, good or bad, has no effect on the cab signals and speed control. The cab signal indicates we may proceed at 30 miles per hour, no more, and be prepared to stop at the next signal. Our engineer knows we are going to demonstrate the automatic speed control. Like all engineers, he knows every foot of the railroad in his territory, knows exactly the location of every switch and signal. Here goes the signal change to restricting, which in railroad language means slow down and be prepared to stop. Our engineer acknowledges the warning whistle, but otherwise he purposely takes no action. There goes the automatic speed control. Down, down goes our speed to a stop. Another feature of this safety device is this tape, which furnishes a graphic record of the actual speeds maintained during the entire trip. This point on the tape shows the stop we just made when we demonstrated the automatic speed control. Now we are underway again, and others along the line, too, are reporting and recording our progress. Listen. Mifflin Signal Tower calling engine 5863 West. Over. Engine 5863 West answering Mifflin Signal Tower. Over. You seem to have made an unscheduled stop. Over. Yes, I've been demonstrating the automatic speed control. We have some moving picture fellas with us. We'll be passing your tower in about two minutes. Over. The radio telephone has added to railroad safety and efficiency. Installed in passenger train locomotives, as well as in freight locomotives, it furnishes a constant link of communication between engine and signal towers along the route, from one train to another, and between locomotive engineer and crew members riding the caboose. Another safety device, the dragging equipment detector. This device is tied in with the signaling system. If it were broken by anything dragging over it, its breaking will cause a stop signal to be displayed ahead of the train. Work on rail and roadbed is another chapter in railroad progress. Pulling spikes, driving spikes, taking up on bolts and nuts, adjusting rails, tamping ballast. All these are important steps in maintaining a safe roadbed for a smoother, more comfortable ride. But it takes the know-how of trained men and a lot of special machinery and equipment. Here is a whole train of specialized equipment for cleaning ballast. A good, safe roadbed depends on clean ballast to provide proper drainage. So these big diggers pick up the ballast for a thorough cleaning. The clean ballast is returned to the track by the machine. This kind of attention to roadbed maintenance is a year-round job for many similar crews, constantly at work on the thousands of miles of trackage in the system. And these thousands of miles get a regular checkup, too. This rail detector car x-rays the rails. An electric current can ferret out a possible defect in the rail long before it is visible to the human eye or troublesome to safe operation. Whenever this machine reports something suspicious, 
the rail is carefully marked so that the maintenance crew following along can replace it with the new one. Still another forward stride is this man-made valley. This huge cut and others like it were sliced out of the mountains near Steubenville, Ohio. It is one of many road improvements being carried out to keep ahead of the ever-expanding needs of industry and commerce. This new route eliminates four tunnels, like this one, moving today's bigger cars and bigger loads without time lost in transit. An important service and economy provided by a system that handles more than 2,000 freight trains every 24 hours. More and more freight trains are hauled by powerful multiple unit diesel locomotives. Their greater flexibility of operation has made an important contribution to railroad progress. So that today, no other means of transportation can equal, over long hauls, the economies and speed of freight. The call for increased facilities for more rolling stock is something the railroad anticipates. This reserve capacity is being increased. New freight cars are coming off the line in ever-growing numbers. Hopper cars, box cars, flat cars, roomier passenger cars, more luxurious appointments, more of the things that make railroad travel enjoyable even buying your ticket and making a reservation. Here at Pennsylvania Station, New York, you will find a device we all have wished for. A device to speed our reservations. Yes, on the Broadway Limited to Chicago, leaving next Monday, a bedroom. Your ticket clerk simply dials a number, and a new kind of recording machine tells him instantly what kind of space is still available. Listen. Broadway Limited Monday. Space still available. Roomettes, one drawing room, bedrooms. Yes, there is a bedroom available. Let's see how fast this reservation is put through. On this box, the ticket clerk sets certain dials. And then, presto, a message giving date, destination, and space desired goes out by wire and is received in the reservation department. At the same time, an electric file is set in motion, which finds the correct space index drawer. Brings it out automatically for the reservation clerk. The transaction is then confirmed by Telewriter. This new system is now being installed in many of the principal cities along this railroad. Yes, there is always something new coming along in railroading. New services, new conveniences for millions of Americans, old and young, eager to travel, eager to ride on some of these famous trains. The Broadway, the Spirit of St. Louis, the Trailblazer, the Iron City Express, the Pittsburgher and the Clevelander, the Statesman and the Senator, the American, the Jeffersonian, the Liberty Limited, the Congressional, the safe way, the sure to go and sure to get there way, to see America and to see our nation's capital.